Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. And today I'm going to show you how to create a really interesting crackle effect. When I first started doing this tutorial, that's not what my plan was. My plan was to show you how to create a mosaic effect. And I tried many, many times and I was in the middle of doing it. And then I noticed that Olivio Siracus uh, put out one on mosaics and I liked the way he put it out because he made the mosaic 3D. What I was basically trying to do originally is uh, take each piece of this clip art and I wanted to do different sizes. But to be honest with you, I'm not happy with the mosaic effect. It's called Boronoi, but I just don't think it really lends itself to do anything good. So as usual, I try to create something completely out of the ordinary. So let me show you how to create a crackle effect using Veronoi and not using it as a mosaic. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get a new document. So I'll do File, New, and I'll just pick Photo, the generic photo. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Rectangle Shape tool. And I've, cre I've, I've, and I've set the fill to white. Uh, you can set it to any color, but white to me works the best. And I'm going to create a rectangle. And then I'm going to filter. No, I'm sorry. We're going to layer, new live filter layer, colors, and vernoy. And there you have a mosaic. And... I don't really like the mosaic. The best you could do is you can increase the cell size and you can make the lines thick or not so thick. And I don't feel much, there's that much use in this. I'm sure other people have found a way to get this to work differently, but I don't like it. Plus, I don't like all this black stuff on the outlines. I don't know why that happens and why it just wouldn't go there. That's not a big problem because all you have to do is increase the size and the black will disappear off the canvas. But here's what I did. Instead of just accepting this the way it is, I duplicated this layer now. So Control or Command J, right? And I multiplied it. And then I opened up the Veronoia um, adjustment. And I changed the cell size. And I want the lines to almost all be the same. So if you increase the cell sign, the lines increase. So you have to lower them. So use your judgment. And that looks pretty good. And that's good. And then I did it again. I control or command J. I duplicated the layer. And you can do this as many times as you want. As long as you're on multiply on the main layer, you can do it as many. Don't do multiply over on the on the actual live Veronoi uh, adjustment, just do it on the main layer. And so now, I don't know, I can go smaller or larger. But remember, if you go smaller now, you should increase the lines. Now I'm not sure which way I want to go. It's all trial and error, and it's all your own judgment. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So let's leave it at the three. I don't mind the three. So I'm going to group the three just so we have it in case we needed some adjustments. We probably don't need to group it. And then we will say on top, uh, layer merge visible. And give it a second. There we go. So now we have a pixel layer of exactly what we had here. So we can hide this. So all we have is one pixel layer now. So then I went to stock photos, the stock tab the new stock tab in Affinity Photo is great. You can go online, but if you don't see the stock folder, uh, the stock tab, go to View Studio Stock. And of course, you can go to uh, Pixel, Pixabay, Pexels, and Unsplash. All of these are supposed to be free to use. So I typed in man in this particular case, and I dragged it right over here. And let's zoom out a second. And I want to bring him in, <clears throat> excuse me. And I really don't want that little back shadow. So let's just maybe, that looks pretty good, I think. And now we'll come back. 
Okay, let's go back to layers. Now let's bring that below that pixel layer. And now we turn that pixel layer and we could say multiply, or we could say darken. In fact, let me just go down the line. So there's many different looks you can get here. I'm just going to flip down the line. I like soft light a lot. And I like that because it gives it a little shadow effect. There's an, a negative effect. And a glow and contrast. So that's the first part. Now you can do a lot of things with this. We'll, we'll work on this a couple of times. Let me duplicate that crackle layer just so we don't lose it. And I'm, I'm going to hide it and bring it down below because I want to keep it just in case. So now what we could do with the pixel layer, we can also do maybe, uh, let's see, a gradient overlay. And we set that to overlay and maybe well, our colors. Let me see. Let's try somewhere like that kind of an effect. I kind of like that. And let's let the light come from which side. Let's see. We want the we want it mostly on him, I would say. So I think that's kind of a cool effect. You can even double on that because you can add another rectangle on top. Actually, let me see. Layer, adjustment layer. Hmm. No, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to just add another rectangle on top and give that maybe even the same color or close to it. Let's say like that and then change that mode to overlay also. But let's turn down the opacity on that. So you can see the difference. That's the one before, and now we just added another one on top. I still think it's a little too bright. But I think that's a very cool effect. Um, I, and I really like this idea. Now, just don't think you can. You only need to do it with the black and white. Uh, so let's just pick another. Let's turn off the effects. So we're back to where we were. I'm even going to get rid of the overlay. So now... We only have this crackle and this guy. So let's go to, I'm doing this by, have no idea what's gonna happen right now. So let's say we typed um, landscape, for example. And let's find a landscape that we might think might work with this. Again, I'm winging this as we go along. The fun part about it is most of my tutorials, I try to use tools I guess not, I don't know how to explain it, but not what they were meant for. Like this was supposed to be used as a mosaic, but instead I'm using it as a crackle. And I can add to that crackle. I can do a lot of different things. I can even add different colors to that crackle. But in this case, let's just pick something. And I don't know if it's going to look good or not, but let's, um, I'm trying to find something that might look good. I don't know, maybe this one. I have no idea what it's going to come out to be. Oh, that looks interesting. So let's increase the size of that to fill this. Okay. And then we go back to our layer and go put it right behind. And I'm not liking it. So maybe, maybe I have to just change the effects on it. Not sure. In this particular case, I don't like what's come up. In other cases, let's try some different. Instead, let's try something besides this guy. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to stock. So you can see I'm winging it because I'm bringing something in and I had no idea whether it was going to work or not. Um, maybe, hmm, I don't know. How about something like that? Let's see, we'll let's find out what size it is. I think maybe darker stuff 
like this isn't even that dark. Um, so let's see where this one shows up as. So we'll bring that one down. And even that is not really very good. Whoops, I just did that the wrong one. Well, I guess it doesn't work with everything very well, to be honest with you. Maybe it does work with just that. So I'm going to try one more thing. Let's try stock photos and let's try black and white. Let's see what happens there. This maybe the black and white makes it more interesting. Or maybe even an old map would be good with this crackle effect. Who knows? So I think you need things that have a lot of darkness in it. How about like this? That might work because then we have some darkness in there. All right. So now we take that and we bring it down. And that I think works pretty well. So let's see what we can do here. Whoops, let's go here. See the different effects. So I'm guessing this is a great effect if you want to do a black and white. Let me just keep going down the line. I'm just going one at a time. I'm hitting my arrow key, and that's kind of interesting. So is that. So I'm playing it by ear here, folks. So just letting you know. Let me see. I think I'll go. I think multiply actually. Linear burn, color burn. Multiply, I think, is still the best here. Uh, another thing you can do, though, if on top of this, for example, is you can, say, create another rectangle. Let's put that on top of everything. You can put it on top of everything, make it overlay, and then maybe give it an interesting color. I'm playing as we go along here, so I kind of like the aqua, but the blue is cool. Could also do a gradient, and that might work really well. And I don't know. Let's see what else we can play with. <laughs> let's see, filter. How about lighting? I don't even, I don't use lighting very much, but let's see what we have here. Let's get some lighting effects in here. I think that might be kind of cool too. So we can expand maybe this way. I'm trying to remember how to move the lighting. I don't remember how to be honest with you. How do I get this? I guess that way. Hmm. I want it to go higher up, but I'm trying to remember how to move it up. Okay, so there's more color there. As you can see, I'm fairly new. I'm only a few months on Affinity, and I haven't used a lot of the things. Oh, here we go, distance. So we could do that. And you know what? We can even add color. So I don't know. Can I add a second light? We probably could add a second light. Let's just try adding another one now. Filter. Lighting. No, same thing. Okay. So, trying to find ambient light here and how to work it. There we go. So I kind of like this. Believe me, I'm I'm not a good good at this right now and maybe I'll do a tutorial once I learn it maybe I should try and play more with lighting I'm trying to get oh here we go add okay that's the first light so let's add another light and maybe this light can be in a different color range like that that's kind of cool and let's move that one back here move that back Maybe down this way. Okay. I don't know. Like I said, this is not, believe me, this is not what I want to do. 
what I meant to do. So this first one, this first light, hmm. So I can't change the color on the first light. Maybe I could do that one. No, let's try this. We went to blue. Okay, no offense, but I really don't have any clue. So I, there's no point in me teaching lighting part of this, but I'm just showing you that there are things you can do and change with the lighting here, which I think is very cool. And there's, there's lots of different effects. I really like this crackle effect, though. I, I think it's so much nicer to work with than, I'm, than trying to create a mosaic, which I think looks cheesy, actually. Um, I, I still wish I could find another photo that's not black and white, because I can't believe that there wouldn't be another photo. I'm trying to think of what I can look for. Um, how about, let's try map. Okay, let's try this. I don't know what it's going to do. It may mean, be meaningless here because it already has all this stuff. But let's give it a try and we'll see. <clears throat> um, let's move it down below. And we could take the lighting off if we want. And that's, that's kind of cool, actually. So, again, you can go to different effects and see what you come up with. Soft light, I think, looks pretty good on that. I'm, I'm just hitting my arrow key, going down the line. And, then, you know, it's, another thing you can do with it, if you don't, you don't even need a picture, let's go, let's keep that out. Let's get rid of both of these pictures, right? And, or in fact, all three of these. And instead, we, we can create just a color background. And we can make it any color we want. I can even, I would even say, hmm, a gray. We could do an overlay with a gray or a green or whatever. And use that as a background if you want. So if you just wanted to put a background on something, you can just do a color like that. And, and then put something in front, like for example, I know, again, there is, I am not doing, I'm winging this and I apologize, but I like to kind of play as I'm teaching because I think you can see the thought process of when I'm doing things and, and everyone else does things in their own way too. So here, I'm just putting digitally fearless and, and this is probably pretty crappy. Who knows? So I can lower that opacity a little bit if I want to. I could um, add an outline to it. Let's see. Where's my outline? There we go. Outline. I can add an outline if I want. Whoa, that's not working. Yeah, there it goes. There's an outline. Maybe the outline's going to be, oh, that's ugly. We'll see. I can add an outline. In other words, you can do all kinds of effects. You can multiply, divide, however you want to do it. So you can use that just as a backdrop if you want. Um, let me see. Bevel and emboss it. No. Nope. How about 3D? And let's give it a 3D effect. And I hate that outline, so let's go back to that and maybe do white. No, maybe do the pink, the blue that's in here. That's better. Okay. So there you have it. Um, I know this was a very strange tutorial. I really wanted to do a mosaic, but I personally, I don't like mosaic in Affinity Photo. And I don't remember when I used to use Photoshop using mosaic, so it could be just as bad in Photoshop, but I think that this is a great way to use Voronoi. I mean, just think about all the things you can do and you can create, I could do something like that. I can create something like that and something like that.
You could do color tints on it. And if you don't like this black border, just that's up to you. You can increase it like that. And then you have no black border. So all that black stuff is out of your way. So I hope you like this tutorial. And if you do, please click like and subscribe and have a good day.